The Girl with Two Lives is a foster care memoir from Angela Hart. This was originally released in 2018. I would have read it for the first time around that time and I've just reread it and I couldn't really remember very much about it. Not because it's not memorable, but because my memory is terrible. And I'm kind of glad about that because generally I enjoyed reading it for the right reasons to see the kind of support that's in place for children like Danielle. Danielle is a 12-year-old girl that Angela and Jonathan are fostering and there is a lot of support for her, but it might not be enough. It's quite an interesting read as well because Danielle's not actually very likeable. Right throughout it, I found her to be not likeable, but it's completely not her fault. Sometimes with foster care memoirs, the child in question can be unlikable and it can just be their behaviour and there's no real reason for it or no apparent reason for it. But with Danielle, we learn about the abuse she suffered as a child and I won't go into any detail about that because it's worth reading to discover this. But the abuse she suffered is absolutely, well, almost definitely absolutely the reason why she behaves the way she does. So while I don't like her behaviour and I found her to be really annoying, I think it was very clear that it's absolutely not her fault, which is not always the case. So it's a very difficult read in places because I'm thinking, okay, you're annoying, you're misbehaving, why can't you do the right thing? Why can't you listen to what Angela and Jonathan are telling you? But at the same time, I'm constantly thinking... Because of abuse in her early years, her brain is wired differently. It's no secret that if you suffer abuse as a child, particularly as a young child, it does affect your development. And this is very clear throughout this. She also has issues with incontinence, which is really unusual for a child of 12. Nighttime incontinence, maybe not so much, but wetting herself during the day is clearly just a sign that there is something deeply psychologically wrong as a result of the abuse. So it's fascinating to read about, but also very difficult because nobody ever wants to think that a child has suffered such severe abuse that it leads to this kind of behaviour, these kind of problems. And again, I don't want to go into too much detail about the specifics, or indeed the specifics with her behaviour, because obviously that's part of the shock factor when you read these books. But I will say that it's it's a very challenging read, not because it's badly written, but because, well, partly because of her behavior and also partly because it's just, it's, it's, it's shocking, the abuse she suffered, but it's more shocking how it's affected her and the long-term effects that that might have. And I think the book is very valuable for lifting the veil on what is perhaps something that we as a society don't want to talk about that much. And I feel like it does a great job of, of saying, hey, look, this is how a person can be severely long term affected by abuse in their early years. And I think for that reason, everybody should read it. But it's not the easiest read. So if you're new to foster care or memoirs, I'd say maybe it's not the easiest place to start. But if you know that this is your kind of book, that you can get on well with these stories and that you find them more fascinating than impossible. And I will admit, even though I've read close to maybe over 60 foster care memoirs now, there are some that I found to be a little challenging to read because of the subject matter. This one is borderline in that category. I didn't ever feel like I had to step away from it, but there were times when it came close. So it's maybe not an entry level, but if you've read others and you know that you know you can deal with this kind of subject, then it's absolutely worth reading because it's very eye-opening. Not the easiest read, but absolutely worth it. Danielle is not a very likeable child in this book, but it's absolutely not her fault. And it's it must be heartbreaking to be in her situation. And I cannot begin to imagine the inner turmoil that she feels. I think Angela and Jonathan did a great job with her, with what they could do. But I also think it helps to show that no one person or two people can care for a child with Danielle's complex needs and behaviours and that, as we see, even having a whole team of people supporting her might not always be enough. And that's pretty shocking. So needless to say, The Girl With Two Lives is a very powerfully written, disturbing in parts, shocking narrative that's absolutely worth reading if you think that it's your kind of story. If you think you're in a position where you can read about this without being too negatively affected, 
then absolutely give it a go. But if you're not sure if it's your kind of read, I'd say maybe try some other foster care memoirs first. But if you think you have the stomach to read about this for a, a good length of time, I think it's about a two hour read. I didn't time it exactly, but it's a pretty decent length, very detailed. Then yeah, give it a go. It's not going to be for everybody, but I think it's a really important read that deals with a really important subject. And if it feels like your kind of read, then I definitely recommend it.